I'm Undyne the Verve, and we're coming to you today from the wonderful Domo Zamitalo in Valletta. And I've got a special guest with me. Please welcome Jessica Do-Right. Well, thank you, Miss Le Verve. Mm -hmm. Yes, as she says, I miss Do-Right, and I won't do you wrong. I'm also known as Mama Burlesque of the Hotbox Girls International. You can also find us in the link below on this YouTube channel. Our latest project is V Noir, which is coming very soon, and it's very mysterious. Why don't you join us for a drink at the salon? Come on. <laughs> I hate to see her leave, but I just love watching her go. <laughs> So, burlesque has been through quite a lot back in its heyday. The powers that be always tried to stop showgirls and burlesquers from doing their thing, but with their wits and cunning, they always found a fun way to get around and do their thing anyway. So today, we're going to talk about adversity in burlesque, and not just in the past. Because in reality, this topic is still really relevant to burlesque today. So, adversity. So people call me Mama Burlesque because I also teach burlesque. And one of the very first classes that we actually have is to ask the women, why are you here? Many different women have many different reasons why they take burlesque. Many have the misconception of the movie burlesque, which I believe was talked about in a previous video by Bam. Oh yes. Anyway, back to why women take burlesque. There's not one reason. There's not an all giving answer to the question. But for many women, it is to find their own power within their bodies or rediscover their sexuality, feeling like beautiful, desirable, powerful women and we find that it's very important with this particular art because it combines power sensuality sexuality and dance right and those are some of the personal adversities that people who take burlesque learn to overcome so why don't we take it back in time let's go back Ooh, I want to reference another band video that you did in the series in regards to the history of burlesque. Mm. Let's talk about Minsky. Ooh. Well, Minsky, if you haven't watched the video yet, which you must, Minsky was this house of vaudeville. They had women who did burlesque. It was basically the Lower East Side of New York's answer to the Broadway version of the Ziegfeld Follies, also discussed in your video. Mm -hmm. So what happened was that women were not allowed to change costume or remove costuming on stage. It was considered, I guess, illegal by the powers that be. And so what they would do in order to change costume quickly is they would have to go all the way off stage, go behind what we call the leg of the curtain, and then they quickly change or lose a piece and then come back out. And there was this one night that this young woman was so nervous about her costume change that before she even reached the side of the stage, she starts removing her costume before she even reaches and the audience goes wild. They're screaming. And so she kind of stops and notices how excited the audience is, and she continues to finish taking off her costume on stage. Well, from that night on, Minsky ordered the young lady to repeat the mistake every night from then on. When that didn't work, they said, okay, now you can't come off stage in less than you came on stage. And Lily St. Cyr had a really fun way of combating that. She did her little bubble bath act, where she would come on stage, disrobe, have a bubble bath, then dress again. And that was her act. Very smart. And, fun fact, she used to pay a chorus girl to lie down behind the bath and blow bubbles. So it actually did look like 
A bubble bath. Isn't that cute? <laughs> a little history about where I started. It was New York City, 2009, and I was doing an opera. It was the Mozart opera De Schauspiel Director, also known as the Impresario, but the lead role of Madame Herz, Madame Golden Trill, whichever version you're doing, was rewritten. And instead of being an aging diva trying to hold on to her reign, she was rewritten as a burlesque diva, so I had to learn burlesque. So there I was, learning burlesque for this opera in a nude see-through bodysuit with pink feather pasties and red feathers fans singing Das Schleg die Abschiedsstunde on this opera stage in New York City. And I thought, you know what? This should be a thing. There should be an entire show of opera and burlesque. Yes. But not everyone thought that was a great idea. So when we were performing and doing shows of opera burlesque and jazz burlesque, all singing, all dancing, hot box girls, not everyone in the burlesque industry thought what we were doing was burlesque. Although the art of striptease, feather fan dancing, and all the beautiful sparkles and sights and sounds that you expect from a burlesque show were there, we really experienced a lot of acceptance and adversity in the Society of Burlesque in New York. But we didn't let that get us down. Just because we were facing adversity, we didn't stop. We didn't stop in New York, no. We became an international Hotbox Girls group. And now, from New York City to Vienna, Austria, and now in Malta, the Hotbox Girls are international and thriving. So never let adversity stop you. So now, let's listen to Miss Undyne Leveur and her story about diversity. So when I started burlesque back in 2010, nobody really knew what it was because there wasn't really a scene for it here. No? So my adversity was to try and like build up a scene here and prove that burlesque is an art form and is worthy of a theater, is worthy of a big stage. But it wasn't until 2015 when I actually started producing shows and was lucky enough to produce the show in places of high standing that burlesque started to be known. And then in 2016, when we finally produced our first Maltese, show at St. James Cavalier that people said, mm, darling, it's burlesque in a theatre, so it must be art then. <laughs> and then with the amazing show that we had and all the great reviews that we got, we finally had the credibility that we needed. And now burlesque is doing much better and we're enjoying the fruits of my labor of love. <laughs> but I think there's still work to be done. And I think Burlesque will keep growing and will make it bigger and better in the years to come. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. So I would like to thank Jessica Duright for being here with us tonight. And I'd like to thank Andine Leverme for being fabulous. <laughs> and we'd also like to thank Thomas Zamatello for having us here in this gorgeous, gorgeous venue. Ooh. Yeah, and see you again next time. <laughs>